What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build an auto-translating chat in Python. So a simple client-server chat, we're not gonna focus on the chat aspect too much here, uh, that uses Google Translator to translate messages. So I can send away a message in German and the server is gonna display it in English automatically. So we don't have to do the translation ourselves. We just send a message in our native language and then the server receives the message in their native language. So let us get right into it. All right, so before we start with the client server system, we're going to take a brief look at the translation module itself. And for that, we're going to install it first by opening up a command line and typing pip install Google Trains. Now, as of right now, you should also specify a version because the problem is if you just say pip install Google Trains, it's gonna install a version that has a bug, at least for me, it had the bug that when you call the translate function, it won't work. It will tell you that there is an issue with some non-type or something. I don't know what the exact message was, but you can fix that by specifying as of right now, the version 3.1.0A0. I think this is an alpha patch or something that gets rid of the bug. And if you install that, you won't have the issue. Now, I don't know if the issue is gonna be resolved automatically in a couple of weeks, months, or years. So if you're watching that in the future, you can also just try to install Google Trains without specifying a version and see if that works. Once you have that, you go ahead and you say from Google Trains import translator, which is a class, and then we create an instance translator equals translator. And now all we need to do to make a translation is we need to have some text. For example, I'm gonna use here now the German text for Hello World. Um, and then we're going to say here now that the translation translation is going to be equal to translator dot translate. And we're going to pass the text here as an input. And we're going to say the source language is DE. So German and the destination language is EN English. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and say print translation dot text. This is essentially how you use that module. You can see this German text translates to hello world. Now um, I can write the German text for I am a programmer and this is the translation. So this works, I'm gonna use German because German is my native language. Um, and uh, we're gonna see that this works also via uh, a client server system, so via chatting. And for that, we're going to start by creating a simple client and this client will connect to a server. So all we need to do here is we need to say import socket. The client itself will not do the translation. The client will just specify the language it uses. So we're gonna say here as the first line of actual code, lang input, lang is equal to input. Uh, please enter your language and then you can use that language. Uh, and we're just gonna assume that the user knows that they have to uh, specify the code. So not German, but DE for German or FR for French or something like that. Um, and then we're gonna say here, client is equal to socket, 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 AF inet, socket, socstream. So we're gonna use a TCP socket here. And then we're gonna say client connect to in this case, the local host and port 5555. Now we're not gonna build a uh, fancy client server chat system here. It's gonna be very simple. We're just gonna have a client sending messages and a server taking these messages, translating them and displaying them. I have a bunch of videos on this channel already where I show you how to build a TCP chat room, an advanced TCP chat room, even a UDP chat room. Uh, if you're focusing more on the chat, if you wanna focus more on the chat, watch these videos. Today, we're gonna focus more on the translation part. Uh, so all we're going to do here is we're going to say while true, the message that I'm going to send is going to be asked for. So I'm going to just have the input function. And then I'm going to say if the message is equal to uh, exclamation mark Q, then we're just going to say client dot close and we're going to break the endless loop. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to send the message. So client sent message dot encode like this. Um, and also what we want to do is we want to specify here an F string, we want to start with some square brackets inside of those square brackets, we want to specify the language. And then we want to send the encoded message, or actually we want to send a message and we want to encode the whole string. So this is how we want to do it. Um, that is basically it. And now we can go ahead and create a server file. So we can say server.py. 
Here we're go going to also say import socket. We're going to import, we're going to say from Google Trains, import the translator with a capital T. And we're going to say that the translator instance, so translator is going to be translator. And then we're going to specify a server language, which can be changed. We're going to say it's English. Uh, and then we're going to say server equals socket 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 dot af inet socket dot sock stream. And here we're going to say server bind, we're going to bind this to a local host. And the port 5555. And then we're going to say server dot listen. And then we're going to say the client and the address are going to be the result of the server accepting a connection. In this case, it's going to be just one thread. So only one connection will be accepted. And once this connection is over, the server will shut down. Again, we're not building a professional uh, chat system here. And essentially, what we're doing here is we're just constantly getting the message from the client. So client receive 1024 bytes decoding that message. And then what we do is we say the language is going to be extracted from the message by saying, take the message, skip the first character since it's a um, square bracket, and then one. So one up until message dot index where we find a closing bracket. Um, up until this point, then we extract the language. And then all we need to do is we need to say that the translation is equal to the translator dot translate. And we want to translate the message starting at the point where uh, we have the closing bracket plus one. So we get the index of that plus one up until the end. This is the message. This is the rest of the message. So everything that comes after this character, uh, we want to take that and we want to say that the source language is whatever we get as a language from the client and the desk language is going to be the server language that we have specified. Um, and then we want to just print the translation dot text. This is all we want to do. And this should actually work unless I made a mistake. So we can run the server. Now we can run the client now. And I can say my language is de and now I can say, again, hello world in German, you can see hello world is received in the server. Uh, I can say I basically write an arbitrary message. I write any message. Okay, that's uh, a decent, decent enough uh, translation. And you can do that all the time. You can also go ahead. I, I don't know any French. So I don't know if the results are going to be uh, good here. But I'm going to change this now to French. For example, I can run the server, I can rerun the client and I can again start here with German, I can say Hello World in German and the server receives a uh, Hello World on French. I hope that's that's correct here. Um, so this is how you can use Google translation in Python. This is how you can use that in a chat. And of course, if you now combine this with the videos that I have on how to build a professional uh, advanced TCP chat room, uh, this can be quite interesting. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.